Welcome to day 15 of TriHack Miss Advent of Cyber 2025. If you're new here, my name is Day and I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Amazon and I'm back for my third year in a row breaking down one of these challenges. Today we're diving into a web attack forensic scenario and we'll be digging into the logs, tracing attacker behavior, and piecing together what happened in this attack step by step. Before we jump in, I've got one simple ask. If this walkthrough helps you, hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone who's learning cybersecurity. Advent of Cyber is one of the best free ways to get hands-on experience and Track Me makes these beginner friendly challenges so fun to follow along. All right, let's get to the story of day 15. Day 15 here, web attack forensics, explore web attack forensics using Splunk. Let's get into the introduction. All right, the story. TBFC's drone scheduler web UI is getting strange. Long HTTP requests containing base64 chunks, Splunk raises an alert, Apache spawned an unusual process. On some endpoints, these requests cause the web server to execute shellcode, which is obfuscated and hidden within the base64 payloads. For this room, your job as the blue teamer is to triage the incident, identify compromised hosts, extract and decode the payloads, and determine the scope. So if you're not familiar, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it's a protocol that specifies how a web browser and a web server communicate. For example, your web browser would make requests for content from the TriMe web server using the HTTP protocol as you go to this room. And if you're not familiar with Splunk, Splunk is a platform for collecting, storing, and analyzing machine data. It's what we in cybersecurity call a SIM, which is a security information and event management system. It helps you to analyze data, search, and correlate, and visualize it. And Apache, if you're not familiar with Apache, it's the most widely used web server software. So we use Splunk to pivot between the web logs, the Apache logs, and host level Sysmon telemetry. By the way, Sysmon stands for System Monitor, which is a Windows system service and device driver that was developed by Microsoft, designed to monitor and log various events happening within a Windows system. It just helps us have better visibility into what's happening on your Windows device. So following the investigation steps below, each corresponds to a Splunk query and investigation goal. Our learning objectives are first to detect and analyze malicious web activity through Apache access and error logs. We also have to investigate OS level, which OS stands for operating system. We have to investigate OS level attacker actions using Sysmon data, identify and decode suspicious or obfuscated attacker payloads, and reconstruct the full attack chain using Splunk for blue team investigation. If you're not familiar, the blue team of cybersecurity are those folks who aim to protect their the defenders of cybersecurity. All right, before we move forward, do we need to start an attack box today? Yes. Do we need to start a VM today? Yes. Let's go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and start the VM by clicking the start machine button here, which we'll do. And the machine will need about three minutes to fully boot. Looks like it already started. It might take a few minutes to be accessible. And we'll also need to start our attack box by clicking the start attack box button as well. So let's go ahead and do that. This should open up the attack box split view, which we have right here. So this will take some time to load, but looks like we started our attacker machine and our target machine. Question here states, I have successfully started the attack box and the target machine. We'll go ahead and check that. You can go ahead and try to access the Splunk dashboard in our attack box here using Firefox. And we'll just navigate to the IP address we have here, which is HTTP colon slash slash 10.65 dot 176 dot zero and on port 8000 it's going to run this all right and then we'll go ahead and enter the username which is blue as we can see here and the password which is pass one two three four and once we have that we'll go ahead and sign in all right once we have this on i would actually prefer to have this open in full screen which is a just nicer way to have this full screen view of the exact same thing gonna open this up fully and now we have a full screen of our splunk search all right back here we want to start by making sure that we adjust our splunk time range to include the time of the event which could be the last seven days or all time so if we go back into splunk right now we have the last 24 hours but it could be seven days it could be 30 days and it could be much longer. We can specify that as needed. And the reason why is because if the default range is too narrow, we may get no results found. So a blue teamer would explore various attack angles using Splunk. And in this task, we'll follow Elf Log McBlue, who uses his Splunk magic to unravel the attack path. Ooh, exciting. All right, so we've got to detect suspicious web commands. 
So in this first step, we're going to search for HTTP requests that might show some malicious activity. So the query that we have here starts by searching the web access logs, which we have here in Windows Apache Access for any HTTP requests that include signs of some sort of command execution attempts. And we can do that by specifying command.exe binary or powershell.exe or just the word powershell or invoke expression, which is also likely through the command line or PowerShell. And then we're using a transform here and we're using a pipe here and using the table command as Splunk to outline this as a nice table with the time, host, client IP, URI path, URI query, and status for our results. And this query will help us to identify possible command injection attacks where the evil attacker might try to execute some system commands through a vulnerable script. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, so because our results were too narrow, we got no results found. So let's just run this for all time. All right, so we get some results back. And what we see here is kind of concerning. So we're seeing that between, if we sort time here, actually, we're seeing between the 26th and the 27th, this web app server host that has this client IP, there looks like there's been some attempt to run this hello.bat file from the CGI bin folder using a command of the XC PowerShell and encoding this base64. So at this point, we're primarily really interested in this base64 encoded strings, which may reveal some weird activities. With this, we could actually try to decode this with a platform like base64 decoder. Let's go ahead and copy this base64 and let's search for base64 decode. And we close this and we'll paste this here and we'll go ahead and decode this. All right, we have some obscure stuff here, but this appears to be saying this is now mine. All right, very interesting here. Let's go back and see what we should be doing next. So we've looked at the suspicious web commands. Next, we're gonna be looking for server side errors or command execution in the Apache error logs. All right, now in this stage of our investigation, we wanna focus on inspecting web server error logs. And these error logs help us to uncover some malicious activity. So we'll be using this query, which is still using the Apache logs, but specifically the error logs. Previously, we used the access logs, but now we're gonna be using the error logs. And we're looking for anything related to command.exe, PowerShell, or something like internal server error. Now, this query specifically inspects when there's like an internal failure that could be caused by a malicious request. And as you can tell, we're searching for error messages with particular terms around command.exe or PowerShell. Let's go ahead and run this and make sure that we set our time range for all time. All right, looks like we get three events back for this. And here, for us to have better visibility into this, we can just say view raw. And it should give us the raw log. And what we see here is an error for the process ID of 3716, similar to what we saw before. But it's saying it's not recognized as an internal or external command. And it looks like obviously these failed and ended up in the error logs. And when something like this happens, it usually means that the attacker's input was processed by the server, but likely failed during the execution, which could be a key sign of exploitation attempts. And checking these error results can help us to confirm whether the attack actually reached the backend of the server or remain blocked at the web layer. Now what we're gonna do next is trace the suspicious process creation from Apache. We're gonna explore Sysmon for some other malicious executable files that the web server might have spawned and we'll do that using this Splunk query. Now this query specifically focuses on the process level relationships from Sysmon logs, specifically when the parent process, which we're signifying here as parent image, is Apache. Apache usually exists as httpd.exe, and we're going to be leveraging the Windows Sysmon index. Previously, we were leveraging the Windows Apache Era index or the Windows Apache Access index. These have given us different types of logs that we can use to draw the storyline. Now we're looking at Sysma, which is process level logs that will help us understand what those relationships are. Let's go ahead and run this for all time. All right, looks like we have 14 events. Let's go ahead and view this in table format. All right, looks much cleaner there. So what we see here is these are different processes that were spawned by a parent image of httpd.exe, which is Apache. And so we see these images that are being spawned by Apache. We're seeing 
httpd.exe, which is fine. But then we start seeing stuff like cmd.exe being spawned by Apache. And we see that happening over and over throughout this time period. What this means is that Apache is spawning cmd.exe, meaning that it is the catalyst that is enabling cmd the cmd.exe process in these cases that we're seeing in a sense that the image here usually technically stands for a process and we already know that we set our query to search for a parent process of apache http.exe but typically and usually normally apache should not be spawning a worker thread and definitely not system processes like command.exe or powershell.exe for that matter. So if we're seeing a result like Apache spawning up command.exe, and this is an indicator of a successful command injection where Apache executed a system command, in this case, cmd.exe or powershell.exe. And seeing this is one of the strongest indicators that a web attack actually got through to the operating system because when you start to do with processes that is operating system level we have looked at other things at the web level with error logs and access logs but once you start looking at processes on a windows machine using sysmon that is operating system level so what do we do next let's look so in this next step we want to confirm the attacker's enumeration activity most mental models for cybersecurity defenders like the matter attack framework or the lockheed martin cyber kill chain lets us know that attackers like to enumerate even if you work in offensive security part of your job is enumerating and the goal of this is to get a lay of the land what systems or services or permissions you have access to. Then, using the knowledge of that to better understand what you can attack or exploit within the environment. Because if you don't really know what you're trying to exploit as an attacker, you're essentially flying blind. So, as cyber defenders, we on the blue team, since we know that attackers will try to enumerate and get a lay of the land, in order to know what they have access to, we can look for those indicators of compromise or IOCs to understand their activities and put the pieces together of their malicious behaviors. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. This query leverages the Windows Sysmon index again and looks for command execution logs where cmd.exe ran the command who am I. Now, this is a staple for attackers, who am I? Just like the name says, attackers will often use the who am I command immediately after gaining code execution to determine which user account their malicious process might be running as. Finding these events helps us to confirm the attacker's post exploitation reconnaissance showing that the injected command was executed on the host. Now attackers generally would do pre-exploitation reconnaissance, but when they do get access to that host, when they drop their malware, they want to also get a lay of the land. So this is what we would determine as post-exploitation reconnaissance. Here we see multiple who am I commands. All of these are being ran within the Apache 2024 directory, which is also a telltale sign of something weird going on here. If we look at the parent image, we see this is being ran using cmd.exe, which is a command line. If we look at the user, we see that's being run by the Apache service. And these are all telltale signs of malicious activities happening because really, why would Apache really need to run a who am I command under normal circumstances? When stuff like this has happened, this should start making you ask questions about what could be possibly happening here, which in this case is malicious. Quick recap of what we've done so far. We started by kind of understanding like what weird stuff happened here, right? We looked through our access logs. We saw some interesting stuff with some base 64, which we saw this was the attacker saying, this is now mine. And then we looked at the error logs that showed us these attempts using PowerShell for some command execution. And then we also looking at Apache running a bunch of weird commands here, running the command of the exe which is weird and then finally we've looked at those post exploitation commands which specifically is who am i in this case all right so in this final step we're going to work to find all the successfully encoded commands and first to search for those strings we're going to use the splunk query and i'll explain it here in a second all right so this query detects when powershell which was set as the image again the process or parent process when PowerShell commands contain encoded commands, which we can specify using ENC or dash encoded command 
or command line base 64, which is a common technique that attackers use to hide their real commands. And also hide a bunch of other stuff as we've just seen with the base 64 we just decoded. Now, if you have proper cyber defenses, this query should return no results, meaning the encoded payload never ran. So let's go ahead and see if we actually have proper cyber defense here in this environment. Let's see if TBFC's drone scheduler security team configured the right defenses. All right, looks like we have no results back for this. And with that, we can go ahead and answer the questions that we have here. So what is the reconnaissance executable file name? Let's go back and look through the reconnaissance logs. So here we know it was who am I, but what's the actual file name? Well, we can actually get that from here which is, I believe, whoamai.exe. So let's go ahead and copy that. This is an executable, and that should be the full file name. Let's go ahead and paste that and check that. All right, awesome. It looks like that's the executable file name related to the reconnaissance. Again, who am I is how attackers kind of just get to know who they are, right? Who am I? All right, so what executable did the attacker attempt to run through the command injection? So we saw here that the attacker tried to run powershell.exe and then encoded this base64. I believe this is the executable that they tried to run for command injection by leveraging this hello.bat file. So that should be command, that should be powershell.exe. Let's check that. All right, so we did it. Finished up web attack forensics. And that wraps up day 15 of Evan of Cyber. If this walkthrough helped, you've got two great ways to keep going, either by watching my 2024 or 2023 Evan of Cyber breakdowns on the screen, or jump back and catch up on the previous days you've missed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.